All right, we're here um, at the Riverview Cemetery, which is in Trenton, New Jersey as well. And this is the grave site of the Roebling family, John A. Roebling. There's a, a portrait of him there, I guess a, a profile. And there's the man right here, John A. Roebling. I believe that's his wife. I forget who's here, some other people. But this isn't the whole Roebling family. There's other Roeblings. Uh, in this cemetery, and I'm not going to search 10,000 graves in here looking for them. I guess I can go up to the front office and ask for where it is, but um, this is the main guy here, so um, uh, it's real nice here. Actually, there's a highway cut through, and this is a very, very old cemetery. Now, John Roebling, John Roebling died in 1869, before the Brooklyn Bridge was built. He just had the concept of it, and... Um, uh, he, he was in New York checking out the site and everything, and he got, he was on a pier, I'm not exactly the, the, the whole thing, but he was on a pier, and uh, a, a ferry came in and banged the pier or something, and somehow he hurt his foot, and uh, he tried to nurse it along, and he wound up getting gangrene, and like two to three weeks later, he passed away, because he didn't want to go to the doctors or something, I don't know. But anyway, his son, Washington Roebling, his, his um, oldest son, Washington Roebling, took over the building of the bridge, and uh, he was actually a, 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 either a general or a colonel or something in the Civil War. And actually, we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a, a, a minor side shoot about history here. Uh, in this cemetery, we have uh, George B. McClellan, who was the uh, general of the Army of the Potomac at the beginning of the Civil War. And he's buried in this cemetery as well, so we're going to go over and see his grave a little bit. But um, anyway, this is where John is buried. And um, this is about 10 miles north of Roebling, New Jersey, which was um, uh, built or constructed for the, for the factory there. The, the town of Roebling was constructed for the factory by Charles Roebling, who was, his, I think, his third son or uh, was, was under Washington. Now, Washington, Washington Roebling, um, when he built the Brooklyn Bridge, when he started to work on it, he, he invented the caisson, which is a wooden box, basically a wooden box with uh, angled sides, and they would sink this down in the water, and it had a metal edge on it, and it would, as they dug it out inside of it, it would just keep sinking down, down, and down more and more until it got to uh, the bedrock. And then when it got to the bedrock, they filled it up with concrete, and that became the foundation for the bridge. And during that time, um, Washington Roebling contracted what's called, at that time was called Caisson's disease, but it's more commonly known as the Benz, which is a narcosis of the blood. It, you get nitrogen in your blood and it, it causes you a lot of pain. So he then got a, um, he got a uh, hotel room overlooking the, the, the construction site and his wife, um, took over the building of the bridge. He told him, she t he told her, well, okay, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And she basically took it over and, and, and finished the bridge. It took about 11 years to finish the, the Brooklyn Bridge. But it's, uh, you know, it's world famous, it's well known, and uh, John A is the man who designed the, um, the wire rope, uh, the steel rope, which we'll see down at the, we, we've, we've already seen that down at the museum, and we talked about it down there. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we're going to go over to, uh, to see uh, George B. on the other side of the cemetery here. Um, here it is, George B. McClellan. The B stands for Brinton? Brinton. Brinton. Okay, Brinton. Anyway, he was, and his wife's very here too, we should recognize her, yeah. And, um, he was the general of the Army of the Potomac. And I just wanted to put, point it out here because this was all done around the Civil War time when they built the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. And George, at that time, was running for president, believe it or not, against Abraham Lincoln. He was the general of the Army of the Potomac. He was kind of like um, a very short guy. They called him like Napoleon and so on. But he was um, not a real aggressive general. What he did, he would just sit there. Oh, the rebels are attacking. Let's go attack them. He wasn't, you know. So, the the uh, 
Union Army was losing a lot of battles because of that. So then uh, uh, Lincoln replaced them. So anyway, um, this is where George is buried here in the cemetery. And I wanted to point it out because in this cemetery, there's a lot of notarized, notary, notarized people in this town. They're, uh, um, and this is a very, like I said, a very old cemetery, and there's some other people buried in here. Like uh, we just passed over here, Switlick. Well, you wouldn't know that name, but in this town, Trenton, New Jersey, you would know the name. Anyone knows the name Switlick? Now, Switlick had a lot to do with making parachutes. He made parachutes, and then later in years, the Switlick company made uh, life rafts. So um, that was done here, and as part of the uh, Trenton makes, the world takes. Uh, so. Uh, we're going to move on now and see. We're going to show some uh, other bridges and things that uh, Roebling made. Okay, yeah, we're here in Cabalder Park, which is on the west side of Trenton, uh, a little north of the town. And um, this is a monument that was erected by the John A. Roebling family in 1908, and it's a statue of John A. himself sitting up there on a chair. And I remember this when I was a kid. This statue, I believe, um, I guess it was erected right here in this spot. I don't know when it was put here. Uh, it might have, might have, I think it was in a different part of the park or in town somewhere, maybe. But I don't know for sure. But what's so interesting about this you were talking about? That everything is with the face. Everything that says it's supposed to be a view is with the it's like builder, B V I L D E R. And suspension, S V S. Yeah. Um, founder, F O V. Inventor has the V. What else? Everything is spelled that's supposed to be. Yeah, but now here's here's interesting here. Answering with a V, but there's an A here. Right. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Maybe somebody could tell me. But um, maybe the guy was drunk when he did it. I have no idea. Yeah. M A N T. Von Monument. Monument. There's no U. The yeah, now, thing. now, what was that saying that you said before about? You never know how much you need a bridge until it's gone. Okay. Well, that can be said about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which was built by the John A. Rowling Company, and um, uh, it fell down. Now, it was called uh, Gallop and Gertie, and uh, it, uh, they have pictures of it. Uh, it actually started waving up and down. Eventually, it started going, and then the fatigue, metal fatigue set in, and it just collapsed. And then they rebuilt the bridge, and they fixed that problem. My father told me, because he worked for the John E. Roebling, as I mentioned before. Uh, they put some kind of shock absorbers or something on the bridge to, to dampen that, that, that uh, raising and lowering, because it was built across the narrows of the, of the river. And in the summertime, it was okay, but in the wintertime, the wind would howl down the down the uh, canyon and start to bridge the raise and lower raise and lower until finally it just kept going like that until it broke. All right, uh, we're here on South Broad Street in Trenton, uh, the South Broad. Uh, it's a 650 South Broad. And this is now are the county administration buildings where the county executives do all their business from. Originally, originally it was the John A. Roebling and Son main office. Now above there, above there is a suspension bridge going between the two buildings that the Roebling Company made. And I don't know when the time, what what time that was made, but it's one of the bridges that they made a test bridge, I guess, to, to just to show uh, their their capabilities and. Um, uh, it's been up there for many years now. Giselle's dad, uh, Michael Ponticello, was he worked for the county and he was the uh, uh, maintenance head maintenance man here. And he used to tell me stories. He used to go out on this bridge and put a chair out there, and he would go to sleep at night because he worked at nights. So that's a little interesting story, Michael Ponticello. Um, at, uh, now we're going to go up. Um, we're going to go up north and look at the uh, other bridges that uh, that uh, John A. Roebling made. All right, uh, we're here on the John Fitch Way, which is 29 north, going up towards Lambertville, New Jersey. And this is what's called um, the Shaky Bridge. It's a name they gave it for obvious reasons. 
And it was supposedly a test bridge that was built by Roebling. It's supposed to, it's supposed to uh, be a model of the uh, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, but I don't think, I don't see any resemblance to the Brooklyn Bridge whatsoever. But um, it was built by a Roebling company, I believe, prior to starting the, the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. So it's probably 1860s, middle 1860s during the Civil War. And uh, it, it is actually bridging a water thing here that there's the Delaware Raritan Canal, which is up this way, and it's an overspill. When it, when it floods, it comes down along here and then it goes out to the river. So uh, it's pretty much um, set here right next to the Trenton Water Company, which is right next door here. And uh, I'm going to go out on a bridge, I think, just to show you how, how it is. Okay, I'm, uh, Walking out on the Shaky Bridge, which I'll show you why it's called Shaky Bridge, and I feel like I'm on a, I feel like I'm on a, I feel like I'm on a boat. I mean, it's going this way, it's going this way, it's going that way, it's going all kind of ways. But um, you can see the cables here; it's been painted over the years, and uh, I imagine it must be new. It be that old, so I believe that two years back it was new deck on. But anyway, um, this is a John A. Roebling uh, test bridge. Okay, uh, we're here in Lumberville, which is, this is called Raven Rock on this side. We're, this is New Jersey right at the moment. And over there is Lumberville, Pennsylvania. And this is the bridge that the John A. Roebling and Son rebuilt in 1947. Now my father, Gino Jig Sclavi, worked on this bridge. And I've got a picture of him standing somewhere like this. Okay, and I'll put that in. And I, last time I was up here, I was a year and a half old. And I'm going to be 67 in January. So that's how many, more, how many years ago I was up here. And um, all these cables, all this stuff, my dad worked on all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. Boy, oh boy. My dad worked on all these cables, made all these cables, the main cables. Now, a little bit of the history of this bridge, it was a, um, what was it, Giselle? It was a, 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 a toll bridge for cars, right? Right. And now it's a pedestrian bridge. They made a nice walk pedestrian bridge. It's a beautiful place to come, walk along and see the, the Delaware River. We're going to see that in a minute. And uh, I can't believe I'm up here. 66 years later. Unbelievable. I wish my dad was here with me. But he is, in a way, he's here. So, it's just a beautiful day today. And uh, we're, we're, I'm now walking out on the Delaware. I'm on the Jersey side. Today is a beautiful day today. It's uh, October 26th today. And uh, it's just a beautiful day, a little windy. A little bit windy, and uh, I don't see any fish jumping. All right, well, it's very windy out here today. It must be a 900 mile an hour wind blowing. They're holding on to the camera. Giselle, if she don't let, if she lets go of it, it'll pull away. Uh, I'm trying to, yeah, we gotta get out of here. So it's really windy out here today, but uh, this is the Lambertville Bridge, Lumberville, Lumberville, like lumber. You build houses with Lumberville. Yeah, we took a ride up here today. It's a Sunday, and uh, it's a beautiful day. People out here riding around, and uh, the Lumberville Bridge was um, some of my dad's work here he, when he worked at Roebling, and uh, we took a ride up here in 1950, 49, 50, and uh, I was about a year and a half old at the time, and he bought, he bought a brand new 1950 Chevy. It cost $1,650 in 1950 and uh, we came up here. So take a ride to see the bridge that he built. Okay, well, thanks very much. We'll see you back at the museum. <laughs> Bye. We've pretty much covered everything here at the uh, museum and all the bridges throughout Trenton and up in Pennsylvania. 
And uh, the one other thing I wanted to tell you was a little bit about my family's history, the Sclavi family. Uh, my, uncle, my grandfather, Paul, came from Italy, Formello, Italy, which was uh, Perugia, a little bit north of Rome. He came here in about 1908, 19 something or other, I really don't know, remember, but around that time. And uh, he went to Mechanicsburg, built Mechanicsville, New York, and he got a job on the Boston and Maine Railroad. He was a fireman, actually, so I guess that's where I get the train thing from. And he heard about jobs in Trenton, where the Roman Company started. So he went down there, and he got a job, and he had, believe it or not, him and his, my grandmother had 21 children altogether. My father was the last of the batch, and he was a little guy, and my grandmother would make soup every day, and he would, my grand, this is the actual pot. And my father would carry, had a lid on, I don't know what happened to the lid, but my father would actually carry this pot uh, with, with the soup in it to my grandfather for his lunch. You know, it was down the block there in Chambersburg. It was all, you know, it was a few blocks away. So uh, my father then, when my, my uncle Angelo, uh, my uncle Robert, I believe my uncle Victor, and my dad all worked for the Roebling Company. That's it from John A. Roebling, and I hope you enjoyed the video. It's uh, been a long video, but uh, a formative video, I hope, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, one thing I want to mention here is it's very important that if you get down this way, Roebling, New Jersey, come to this museum. It's a very interesting place. It's history. It's part of the United States of America and the greatness of America and so on, and I get choked up even thinking about it. But um, thank you. Uh, I'm, you know gung-ho America. Let's see what the other people could do in this world. They could do stuff like this. Of course, they were, they were, you know, the world was German. But anyway, come to the museum, support the museum. Not a lot of people don't know it's here, so one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is so people can find it all over the world. All my uh, viewers out there, subscribe to my videos, please. And uh, Giselle and I, we'll see you on the next video, and thanks for watching. And above me here, this is a this is a suspension bridge, <laughs> suspension bridge that uh, John A. Roebling had built. They used to go on that bridge and um, uh, sleep. So uh, that was a test bridge I made for uh, I guess the test. Oh, thanks a lot, lady. Now we got to do it all over go. again. Come on by. Come on by. Cut him out. Okay, we'll start again. Um, at, uh, now we're going to go up. Um, we're going to go up north and look at the uh, other bridges that uh, that uh, John A. Roebling made. That's why the production companies got 20 people around.